In just over 10 years, Tesla has gone from a small, relatively unheard of electric sports car manufacturer to the name that comes up every single time someone talks about electric cars. It successfully launched three mass-produced cars in addition to the original Roadster. It's diversified into the energy business, producing and selling both photovoltaic solar panels and energy storage products. And it's managed to do what is considerably rare in the automotive world. It's made the leap from an automotive startup to a mainstream company. Getting to this point has been incredibly hard work for everyone at Tesla. In the past 10 years, we've seen Tesla cash-strapped on more than one occasion, fighting to keep afloat while simultaneously pushing to accelerate the transition to clean, renewable energy and transportation. During the second half of last year, Tesla turned a modest profit, silencing some of its critics who said the company was overvalued and unlikely to ever survive. That profit came from the best sales Tesla has ever experienced, amplified by a push to get as many Teslas, mainly Model 3s, to customers as possible before the federal tax incentives for Tesla electric cars started to roll back. In Q1 this year, however, Tesla lost more than $7 million, experienced a slowdown in vehicle sales, and had to deal with some unexpected problems caused by industrial action at European ports and Chinese import red tape, not to mention needing to pay back nearly $900 million of bonds that matured during the quarter. More on those later. Despite this all, the company is eager to continue to ramp up its vehicle production. It's continuing to develop its semi, second-generation roadster, and recently unveiled Model Y ahead of planned production in the next year or so. And that's even before you look at Tesla's plans to launch its own insurance service next month, its goal of launching a robo-taxi service next year, and rolling out full autonomy to autopilot-equipped Teslas, pending regulatory approval, by the end of 2020. All of that costs money, and it's caused plenty of analysts to ask Tesla CEO Elon Musk where Tesla plans to find the money if the company is operating to loss. Musk has until fairly recently suggested that there's enough money on hand to support Tesla's operations and has been reluctant to talk about any kind of external fundraising effort. But in last week's Q1 earnings call, Musk did seem to suggest that Tesla was now open to the possibility of raising extra funding, saying that, quote, At this point, I do think there is some merit to raising capital. This is sort of probably about the right timing. This particular statement was later backed up by Tesla, which said that while it expects the cash it generates from its core operations will, quote, generally be sufficient to cover our future capital expenditures and pay down our near-term debt obligations, it may choose to, quote, seek alternative funding sources. This is the first time for a while that Tesla has talked about raising money, so let's take a look at how it might do that. In order to do that, I'm going to look at some of the ways it's raised money in the past, plus examine why it may or may not choose those as an option now. I should also add a little disclaimer. I'm no financial expert, nor do I proclaim to be, nor do I play one on TV. I'm talking about this in layperson's terms, and you shouldn't base any investment on what I'm saying here. I may, probably, have got some of this wrong. So if you want financial investment advice, talk to a professional, not a YouTuber. Okay. In addition to raising money through deposits that certainly helped Model S, X and 3 on their way to production, Tesla has heavily relied on equity sales in the past to raise capital. In addition to traditional investment rounds where large investors gave Tesla money in exchange for a proportion of the company, Tesla's IPO and stock market flotation, something I think Elon Musk now really regrets because of the challenges associated with being a publicly traded company, actually helped Tesla raise the money it needed in those early days to keep things running smoothly. A couple of notable shareholdings, Toyota and Daimler, actually helped save the company at one point, when Musk was writing personal checks to keep the company afloat. The Toyota and Daimler investments, which saw both major automakers gain shares in Tesla for a few years in exchange for Tesla's engineering mojo, kept the company fed with cash. Today, neither company owned Tesla stock, but at the relevant point in time, it really helped Tesla out. But these kind of exchanges dilute the amount of control that Tesla has. It would be required to hand over a portion of its control to a third party, or in the case of issuing extra shares, would dilute the shares of existing shareholders. Given how Musk would prefer to eventually go private, I think it's fair to say that an equity sale isn't primarily on the cards, either via a shareholding agreement or issuing new shares on the stock market. 
Although equity sales don't affect a company's profitability, it does change their stock value, assuming, of course, that extra shares have been issued. Tesla also had help from the US government at one point in the form of the Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Loan Program, or ATVM. It was a program designed to accelerate the production of cleaner vehicles, and many automakers, including Ford and Nissan North America, applied for funds under it. Tesla borrowed $465 million specifically to help it build the Model S. It repaid that loan, the low interest loan, in 2013, long before other loan recipients did. But in this case, Tesla wouldn't qualify for a similar government program because there aren't any, so sourcing funds this way is most definitely off the table. Tesla has also used asset-based loans in the past, where tangible assets like buildings and equipment and inventory are offered as security on a loan in case of delinquency. These kind of loans are usually offered by large financial institutions who are looking for a long-term investment, and they're a little like your average mortgage or car loan. You don't pay on time, and the creditor gets to take your house or your car in lieu of payments. Here it's slightly different because the creditor eventually gets to sell assets in order to recover the loan amount, but you get the idea. Similarly, there are loans which leverage the accounts receivable, which essentially is a little like a bridge loan or a payday loan, but for a company. It gets to borrow money based off what it's owed through unpaid invoices, for example, and then it repays the loans when the money arrives. In Tesla's case, this has also included a borrowing against money that's due to be paid in the long-term future from customer lease agreements for vehicles, but which hasn't actually been paid yet. Tesla has also taken out loans based on solar and energy portfolios that it has, leveraging the potential earnings from those to liquidize some extra cash. Then there are bonds, which operate a little like loans. But rather than borrow from a bank, the borrower is using the public market as a source of the funding. Tesla's done this in the past too. Bonds can also be bought and sold, so the original creditor may not be the one who ends up getting the money when the bond matures because they will have sold it to someone else. These bonds come in different types, including so-called junk bonds, which offer investors a big reward for buying them. But that reward is because of the high risks associated with the bond, i.e. the bigger the reward, the higher the chances that the company won't be able to pay that money back. While these loan and bond routes are possible, they aren't that likely in this situation as they tend to have a fairly high interest rate for the borrower in question, which of course is in return for those high risks. So what Tesla prefers instead is what's known as a convertible bond or a convertible note. It offers a lower interest rate for the borrower and allows the creditor to change their investment from a bond to an equity or some other form of investment at a predefined point in the term of the bond at their own discretion. Earlier this year, Tesla had to make a sizable payment in order to repay $920 million in convertible senior notes before they converted to equity and payment from the company. Tesla managed to hit the deadline, but it was one of the major reasons it made a loss in that first quarter. If I had to guess, I'd suggest this last option is where Tesla is going. That's exactly what it's done in China in order to finance the building of Gigafactory 3. It might be a little riskier than an equity sale, but it does mean that Tesla retains more control. Since it's expanding its portfolio and pushing hard on all these fronts, I think that's where it's heading. How much will Tesla need? Well, that's a very different story. Why don't you leave your guesses in the comments below? That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and you can support us using Patreon, Ko-fi, or by grabbing some swag from our swag shop. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.